Uh, so we're on Blackfield on Hack the Box, and we are going to make a little. Uh, we're going to utilize the OSCP uh, template, and then from there, we're going to change it up to make it our own because I've heard of people having problems with their template and word format, okay? Um, I mean, I think the guided modes are right. Some of the questions I have no idea what they're asking me, but uh, I think it's all right. Uh, Blackfield's not in guided mode, just so everyone knows. I just threw it into this category or whatever. But we are going to make a, um, yeah, we're going to use the OSCP template. So we're going to put everything in here. We're not going to do any freaking special magic crap where we're going to make this all of a sudden into a Word document that's perfectly formatted, all sort of stuff, right? We're just going to start it like we would normally. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a couple things. Well, let's start off with MMAP. I, I always write down MMAP or port scan or some of that, even though I don't really ever run MMAP, but I always run that. But I always just say like something like that, right? And let's start off with the Rust scan here. And everything that we do, we want to kind of, if it even works, if it's actually even up and running. Um, you know what actually helps out a lot whenever you're doing this kind of stuff? is to actually start up a VPN. <laughs> that usually helps out tons. All right, now we can go ahead, let's clear that out. We'll start off with our Rust scan. And we see these open ports, right? So once we get these ports, we can go ahead and we can save it if we want to, right? We can do a Rust scan. And we could output that output into something else like ports.txt or something like that, right? Okay, but once we see these ports, we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to copy this or we could take a print screen of this. But we pretty much want to show what we did, right? So we're going to grab this. But we also want to make it easier on the person that's going to be running stuff. So we're going to say um, the tester started with an with a port scan utilizing a tool known as Rust scan the same type of scan could also be done could also be accomplished utilizing a map right hey thank you very much green care company okay oh, we also want to make it easy for the person right so we go ahead and grab that and we can throw that into here All right, and we want to make it easy on ourselves, right? So we can go ahead and we can come over here and we can cat that ports.txt and it can say, no, we'll try one more time. Oh, that's 10, 10, 11, that's why, why. That you can't reach that, 100% cannot because it should be 10, 10, 10, 1, I, 2. Okay, uh, that's gonna make it easier ourselves. That's all we're gonna do there. Or we can also just copy down here just to make it easier ourselves for later on. And we can go ahead and we can throw that into here also. All right, now we have this port scan. Let's go ahead and try some things here. Let's try um, let's try one more port scan just to make sure that we're not missing anything because the box did just start up not too long ago. Okay, it looks good. All right, now let's try an SMB client. I know I don't really remember how to do this box, so we're gonna kind of go through it together at the same time. Whoops, that's not the NIP address, is it? So let's go ahead and try SMB client. Tack L. And we do have anonymous access, okay? So let's go ahead and head back over to our notes. We're just gonna do a quick uh, Blackfield anonymous access on SMB, right? Okay. And we can go ahead and we can copy the command, show them what command we used. We used that command and we found the following, right? We found the following link right there. Awesome, okay. Easy day so far, right? Now let's go ahead and let's see if we can actually get anywhere. Let's try profiles. <clears throat> All right, um, and we do get profiles here, okay? So we know we can get into profiles now, so that's another problem, right? So we can go ahead and say, 
we can do this and say profiles question mark then we could say something like uh, the tester um, the tester utilized anonymous SMV access to obtain we have usernames to obtain user names within the profiles SMB, right? That's a problem like right there, right? So let's go ahead and look at the uh, anonymous SMB access. Uh, let's see if there's a CVE for it or anything like that, right? So SMB in all sessions, why your pet is probably okay. The same vulnerability. Um, SMB access, um, we'll say CWSS. And proper access control we can go with that okay so we have a cwe 284 we haven't really done anything crazy yet right so we haven't found like a cv or anything like that right okay so we could throw this into here for anonymous access and we could just throw this at the very top for our own thing right there we go okay and then we could give a little website description underneath it right Oh, right. We give the website, and then underneath that, we give a little description of what that is. Okay. Uh, Prove of the identity. Okay. Access control involves boom, boom. The product is not restricted or incorrectly. Uh, restricts access to resources for unauthorized access. Right now, that's what we've done. Right. We can actually grab all that. All right. And let's go ahead and throw that in here. Now we have what the vulnerability is. And now we're inside of our system, right? Now let's go ahead and let's actually copy all these now. And did I already actually make a little print screen of this product right here? Nope. So let's go ahead and show that. All right. I mean, they really only need to see Dolly. They don't need to see the whole thing. They just need to see that, yeah, you were able to get in. And then the command that we use for that. So it's quick copy and paste for the person that's going to be uh, going at it, right? Uh, one thing to remember is that whenever they talk about report running, they always say that should be a competent, um, like, IT employee. So someone that's competent in this stuff. So you don't have to maybe break down every single thing we should make it pretty easy on them right we have that now let's go to sublime users.txt we'll throw those guys in there right and let's just go ahead and just actually just get rid of all of these okay we'll delete all those from here we'll go ahead and we will grab that let's see what else we got Cool. Delete all that. All right. Let's make sure there's no spaces in here. There is spaces. All right. Let's go ahead and get rid of all spaces. And I always forgot to do that bash. There it is. So we can go ahead and we can now cat user.txt. I didn't save it yet, did I? Save that cat users.txt. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. We got rid of all the spaces. We'll put that usernames.txt. Then we'll remove tech rf that users.txt. Right? That link right there, you don't need to show that you did this, okay? We just said that we grabbed all the usernames, right? However, they decide to get rid of all that white space and everything is on them, right? But we can cat that usernames.txt. And say tester put the usernames into a usernames.txt file. Could do something like that. We say the tester um, the tester copied the usernames into a usernames.txt file. 
and I removed all spaces, all spaces. There you go, okay? So far, we got that right. Now let's go ahead, let's scroll down, and let's go ahead and, uh, I don't know, now we have usernames. I kind of want to try like a get MP users or something like that, right? Get MP users. First, we need the domain name, correct? So we do a crack map. Exact SFB 10, 10, 10. Um, I already forgot the IP address for this machine. 192. 192. Tag U. Bunch of crap. Tag P. Bunch of crap. We should be able to receive the domain name. Which we do, blackfield.local. And as you could also see, just so you guys know, that plus tag right there kind of looks a little weird because we just put a bunch of crap in. That means that we have anonymous access. Okay. So let's go ahead and we will do a get MP users. Obviously, if they work there, they know what their domain name is, right? So we could just do something like this. Something like that. Uh, attack no pass. Attack users file, right? Users Usernames.txt. Let's try this. See if we get anybody. Any hits? Oh, I probably need to actually clear that out. Let's go ahead and do a sudo nano Etsy hosts. And we'll go ahead and we'll try that again. And we can also use Kerbrew for this too, right? Which Kerbrew would probably actually go a little bit faster with this. So we could also do something like Oh, what is that? User audit doesn't have pre-authentication set. So we can actually use curb root for this. So let's go ahead and do a slash home curb root. Boom, boom. Okay. This is going to be on 192, right? And that's going to be for blackfield.local. And that's going to be usernames.txt, right? Here we are, 2020, like right there. And we got support. Okay, support has does not have pre authentication required. Okay, so we can show something like this, like right here. Okay, and just say our next step, right? What we did next was we did a curb root with the obtain user name list. The tester then utilized. Curb root, curb root to, to see if curb root with a username file to find uh, users on the machine and see if any users have free authentication not required. Should be curb root free authentication not required, right? We go ahead and copy this. Put a little nice little box around this guy saying, hey, this is bad, right? Boom. Make that a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay. Well, we'll copy that and we can throw that into here. There we go. Okay. So now we now have that like right there, right? Now from here, let's go ahead and copy that command. And we will throw that up here. And let's go ahead and look up curb root CWE. I feel like this should be an improper access control again. A zero response discrepancy. This issue difference of failed login message could allow attack return with username. Okay, username enumeration tool. Uh, poor findings. Let's go ahead and try something like um, curve or uh, free auth authentication not required. CWE improper authentication again. Improper restriction of excessive authentication. Server not restricted. No, okay, nope. Insufficiently protected credentials.
All right. <laughs> the product has been restored to authentication credentials, but it uses an unsecured method as susceptible to unauthorized interception and retrieval. That sounds like it more than I think improper authentication, right? So we can go ahead and grab this one like right here. Um, weak authentication, plain text, storing password cover format, password configuration file, missing password field, unprotected transport of credentials. This sounds kind of like, you know, this sounds more like it. So we'll go ahead and we'll grab that like right there. That sounds like a curb brute to me. Um, so let's go ahead and throw that at the very top, right? We have that. Again, we're going to take a print screen of this, right? So they can see what it is. It is architectural. All right, and then we have this down here, right? Boom, 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 boom. Okay, bam. All right. So now that we have that, now we can try to crack that hash, right? Let's go and try to crack this. Oh, that's at 18. Uh, yeah, he's not going to freaking ever crack it. Okay, now let's go ahead and actually let's do a get MP users. And we'll say it change over into 23 format. We utilize get MP users. So get MP users. And we are going to do this for, let's go ahead and put that guy's name into a file. We'll say echo support into um, um, asrep.txt. And we'll do a get MP users. And this could be for Blackfield, right? dot local slash tack no pass there we go tack users file is going to be as rep dot text yep definitely put that slash the wrong way there we go okay so we can show something like this and say to And do hash dot text, right? There we go. Okay. Explain like I'm fine to make a report shot. <laughs> Sorry. If it's um if it's too low level, let me know. If it is too low level, let me know. Now we can go ahead and grab this like right here, right? Okay, we got our curb root like right there, right? Then we can say to make a hash file that John the Ripper and Hashcat can crack more easily. The following following was done to make to create a twenty-three dollar sign hash. Then we can show this, right? Let's go ahead and actually cat that as rep that text and then we'll go ahead and we'll do that again. We'll drop that again, right? And then we'll cat that hash dot text. All right. Now we have that. Now they can see that as rep dot text, there's the user support is in there, right? They can see that on there that the user support is part of azrep.txt and it's being put into hash.txt and they can see what hash.txt is, right? So they can see that everything lines up appropriately. So there we go, right? Okay. So we've gotten all that down. Hey, thanks a lot for the follow, you modadev. Okay, so now that we have all that down, let's try to crack this hash right so we'll grab this and we'll go ahead and well we'll go ahead and we'll john hash dot text for list rocky dot text fork equals four right um oh probably because oh, one second i don't know why uh, let's go ahead and uh, nano or sublime. Usually I just K 
copy and paste the hash. That's why if you want to do this. I'm replicating the attack. If the user is having issues cracking the hash, delete the end packet, delete the first line, first line, which starts with end packet. There we go. All right, and we do end up getting a cracked hash, right? I'm going to grab that, put a little box over this, just in case people don't realize that this whole part is bad. With our hash.txt file, right? There we go. Okay. Now from here, now we did all this, we can go ahead and let's not forget about our command. There we go. Now we can go ahead and start to try to use crack map exec and things like that. But we want to figure out what is next before we just decide, oh, we're going to write this down because we don't know what's next. So let's go ahead and crack map exec, um, SMB, or actually I can just use crack everything. And for any tools that I use like this, that like I made or like somebody else made or some of that, I always also add a link to it too. So actually I don't know if this is going to work because of these weird characters in it. Yeah, it's mostly not going to work because of those weird characters. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to use crack map exec, SMB, and we'll go ahead and we'll throw in the IP address, which is 192, 1010.192, TAC U is support, TAC P, it's going to be this. And another thing is, it may depend on the people that you're working for, things like that, but um, you may black out the passwords also, like put like a box around that, like a red box or something like that, okay. Now obviously he can log into SMB, he didn't get a pawned, so we know that's not too much into it, but uh, because SMB is open. Let's go and try WinRM. Right, with RM, we cannot log in with that. What about LDAP? Hello, Fixit42. How are you doing? Let's try LDAP. Nothing there. And that's about it, isn't it? So we're starting to run out of ideas here, right? Now I'm wondering if Black Knight... Remember we found those two SMB shares and we just happened to go to profiles first. I'm wondering if Black Knight can actually get to the other um, SMB share. Right, or something like that. Uh, but now that we do have credentials, we may be able to utilize uh, Bloodhound or some of that. So let's use Bloodhound Python real quick. All right, and we're just going to go ahead and we're going to throw in there blackfield.local support. Blackfield and 10, 10, 10, 1, 9, 2. All right, and before I actually do that, let's go ahead and make directory blood. CD into blood. Probably exit out of here, huh? Let's go ahead and close this one out over here. Okay. And we're just going to copy this, actually. If I can copy it. <laughs> there we go. And we'll go ahead and we'll echo... Or we'll go ahead and we'll put that down here. So we have it all in one area, right? All right, cool. So we are getting in and we are finding stuff, right? So now we can go ahead and we can put in Bloodhound over here. Did it work? Yeah, okay. We got somewhere. So we put in Bloodhound Python, right? 
and let's go ahead and see what we can get with this, right? So first thing we're going to do is we're going to show the command that we ran. All right, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take that print screen again. So we did actually run that command. That obviously found some stuff in there, right? The IT guy should know that once he sees those different numbers, things like that, like, yeah, that is ours. And we'll go ahead and we'll show this down here once we're done. Awesome. Now we can go ahead and start up Bloodhound. We'll say Neo4j console, and we will say Bloodhound over here. Sudo. And we'll say Bloodhound over here. All right, that started up. And we found the user support, right? What is this? Oh, this is uh, old stuff like right here. Let's go ahead and delete that first. We'll clear the database. Upload data. Home, uh, desktop. Hack the box, guided mode, black field, blood, and there we go. We're just going to say over in my notes over here the tester starts Neo 4J console and Bloodhound. And then we can just go ahead and show that over here. There we go. What's up, Chad B. Noob? How you doing? All right. Once we get, once we clear that out, all right, we'll go ahead and we will look for our support user. Click on him. Uh, Riovac? Riovic? Thank you very much for the follow. Oh, shit. Everyone's following now. Oh, crap. Now, Fifisini? Thank you very much for the follow. All right. So, we got this guy, right? Um, he last logged on uh, many, many times ago. All right. We got a bunch of siblings. Effective inbound. He's not an admin, obviously. As reproducible is true. All right. Um, we got first degree group memberships. We have one. He's a member of domain users. Makes sense. Unrolled group memberships. Uh, domain users, everyone. Authenticated users, pre-Windows, and users. Okay, that all makes sense. Local admin rights, nothing. Execution rights, nothing. First degree object control. Okay, so he has a force change password over audit 2022. Now, we cannot log out of the system. But let's go ahead and grab this. And we'll put a box around here saying, hey, this is bad, right? Um, I don't know if I can actually like rotate that. Can I rotate that box? That would be freaking cool. No, I can't do it like that. Doesn't look like I can rotate that box. I guess I can put like arrows at it. Like, this is bad. You know? No, I'm not going to do that though. Um, yeah, can we delete that? Thanks. Okay, so we got something like that, okay? Hey, thanks a lot, Alvin Mail. Thank you very much. We'll go ahead and we'll grab this. Okay. Um, actually, you know what I should have done? I should actually have support. Did I, in that picture, I actually get audit 2022 over there? So we'll say that he has force change password. Okay, let's go ahead and actually delete that one. And we, I want to get audit in there also, right? Can we like zoom in like a little bit? Or, like maybe zoom out some more? I want to get audit in there too. That's what I want in there. There we go. Let's go ahead and do that. And we'll throw this into here. And then we can just say, as shown above, um, support user has force.
change password over the audit 2020, I believe that is, right? Audit 2020 user, domain user. Okay, so from here, let's go ahead and look up um, CWE force change password. A verified password change, weak password recovery mechanism, not using password, credentials management errors, uh, password agent with long expiration, excessive authentication. I would say that this is, because we haven't, we can't really say it's an unverified password change, right? I would say this is more um, CWE for, um, let me see here, um, permissions, um, excessive permissions. I would say that, right? Execution with unnecessary pr privileges. Here we go. Improper privilege management. So we can go 269, 250, incorrect permissions assignment permissions issues so pretty much a bunch of you know different permission ones all right we're just gonna go with execution with unnecessary privileges well not even that we'll say improper privilege management all right privilege defined with unsafe actions privilege chaining privilege context yeah this looks pretty good like right here so we'll go ahead and we'll grab this Architectural, okay, cool. Let's go ahead and we'll throw this into here. All right, we're gonna throw this at the top. And obviously before that, right, we're gonna throw in our little... Now, if you're doing like a CVE, right, and you've already done a CVE, you kind of want to stick to CVEs, things like that, right? If it is a CVE, right? If it's, um, you know, a CWE, you want to kind of stick with those. You don't want to be jumping around to 12 different things. You know what I'm saying? Like, if there's a... CWE for it, go ahead and use that one if you're already using CWE. You don't want to be jumping around. All right. So now we're here. Let's go ahead and let's look at... Um, how to do a force change password. Right? So right click on this, help, Linux abuse, and there we go. Okay, so we could show them, like, hey, this is a problem. So we take a print screen of this. And we want to throw that underneath here. Then we're going to go ahead and we are going to throw this into our guy over here right we can use rpc obviously from linux to force change a password right so the target user all right, is going to be support or excuse me uh audit 2020 right yep audit 2020 uh new passwords going to just we'll say one, two, three, exclamation point. We'll say something like that, okay? Just so that we know that we hit up, you know, most likely all password policy, things like that, right? Domain, blackfield.local, our controlled user, that is uh, support, their password, right? There we go. And then the domain controller, 10.10.10.192. Okay, now we did that. I believe that we can actually verify that password's been changed. Okay, that's past the hash. Let's see if we can actually verify that. All right, nope, we don't have to do anything like that, okay? So now we have that, we can go ahead and copy that. Let's throw that into our notes that we're gonna make for somebody. There we go. And we'll go ahead and we'll take a print screen of that also, right? All right. Now, from here, 
Let's go ahead and try logging with crap map exec. We'll try um, SMB first. Uh, SMB, we're going to be able to... Well, we'll be able to see if it's pawned. Okay, we're not getting a pawn there. Let's try what RM. Okay, supposedly we cannot win RM in. Um, now we're also wondering, did that actually change the password, right? I'm also wondering that now kind of too. Let's try LDAP. All right, we can't LDAP in either. Huh. So now, let's go ahead and see what Audit 2022 can do then. Or Audit 2020, excuse me. So we'll double click on him. We're down. Let's see what he can do. Okay, transitive objects. These members are the same thing, right? Nothing there. Unrolled group memberships. Okay, he looks like he's a member of all the same things. First degrees. He's a member of domain users. So not really getting much with this Audit 2020 character, are we? We've got 315 people in the same OU. All right, not really getting too much with this guy right here. So that might be something, that might have been a rabbit hole like right there. But it is still a problem on an actual thing, right? So let's go ahead and actually check out, what were those share names again? Remember the shares? Because we still haven't looked at one share. We only looked at the... Forensic. Do I need a username and password to get into Forensic? I do. Okay. There we go. All right, cool. So we can actually get into Forensic now, which will give us other ideas on what to do right so let's go ahead and show that that user can get a forensic which that's not technically a vulnerability right and we'll say smb access with audit 2020 that's not necessarily a bad thing like right there they may need access to that right that's not a bad thing that's not necessarily a vulnerability we were just able to exploit that access now because we have been able to change this password, right? So we're now we're just chained together different things, right? Just like if someone has remote management users, doesn't necessarily mean that that's a vulnerability. Now, if it's a remote management user, it's the brand new guy that just got in and he has remote management user domain to the domain controller, then yeah, you might have some problems there, right? All right, so we got that up there. There we go. And let's go ahead and let's see what we have inside of here, right? Um, CD into commands, maybe. We got domain admins. Not to, ooh, this looks pretty good. Let's actually just mget star prompt off. Actually, can we just go ahead and just actually put this onto ourselves? Let me go into um, my cherry tree, this one like right here. And we will try to just mount this. See if we can just mount this guy right here. And this is going to be for uh, Blackfield. Dot local under, whoops, under our forensics, right? We'll make a directory called SMB. And we'll go ahead and we'll put this in the SMB. Um, username was is going to be... Uh, Audit 2020, 
with a password of this like right here. What? <laughs> Is it forensics or forensic? Forensic. Okay, let's make sure that, that actually works before we uh, do anything else with it. Yes, it does. Okay. So then we can go ahead and we can say we mount, mount the SMB chair to ourselves for easier access. Uh, the tester then mounted, Jesus, if I could type, then mounted the SMB share to themselves for easier access to the file system. All right. There we go. Okay. Now, let's hop into that command output again. Cat domain admins, I guess. Okay. Um, let's see here. What would actually be a good thing then? System info, maybe? We're getting some pretty good stuff in here, right? They obviously know we're in here. They know what's in here. But we're getting some pretty good stuff in here, like right now. Uh, domain users. I pawned your company. That's probably, you know, I'm sure Chappy Noob saw that in real life. The, um, what is it? It would immediately be over with the assessment and they would be like, hey, you got a problem. So we have this user. We also have this user, like right here. So we have users that we haven't seen before now, right? So we have different users. So from what we saw another time, All right? So let's go ahead and grab those users like right there. We'll go ahead and we'll do this. We'll say the tester found different users than what was found before. Okay. We're just gonna say, "Yep, think you might have a little bit of problem if that was your uh, if that one of those users are in there." So we have this new user like right here. So that's something to maybe want to look into. Um. Let's see here. What else can we look into? Let's go and CD back back. Memory analysis. All right, that's a big deal. Like right there is LSAS.zip. All right, uh, let's go ahead and um, copy LSAS.zip to um, desktop hack the box. Guided mode, Blackfield. Probably should have went back to. But yeah, that's a big deal, like right there, that LSAS.zip, because that may have uh, the Savage system in it. Let's go ahead and take a print screen of that, like, real quick, also. With a memory analysis, the file was found. Right. So let's go ahead and hop back over here. Within memory analysis, the following uh, zip file was found. Okay. 
copy that back to myself. Let's see what we get here. The tester copied the LSAS.zip file to themselves for further investigation. Okay, so that looks like it's done. Let's go ahead and make sure that it looks the same. LSAS, LSAS. Okay, let's go ahead and unzip it. All right. All right, so we have this LSAS.dump now. Okay. Um, I feel like we should be able to do more with that. I believe it's PyPyCats, right? That could do that. Um, it's going to be PyPyCats, and then we could do an LSA mini dump for that LSAS.dump. There we go. Yep, and that is. I'm sending a SAM file like right there. Cool. Well, that is their hashes like right there, right? So let's go ahead and show them that we unzipped it, right? And if I jack up usually like this, and it's a test, you know, obviously that's all I've ever done these on. But um, I'll just come back down here. I'll say unzip like that. And then I'll say um, freaking, uh, you know, like yes. Just to show that. Just show that I'm unzipping it. Unzipped it, and once we did, after we did that right, we did our Pi Pi Cats right. We'll say we'll put that in the LSAS dot text, so we don't have to see the whole thing. There we go. Let me show what we mean by dump. We'll go ahead and cat the LSAS.dump. Whoops. <laughs> Not that. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll cat that uh, LSAS.txt. There we go. Okay, we can show that there's you know, something like a username service backup. We got NT hash here, right? So we can now pass the hash, things like that, right? And depending on the organization, this may still not be anything. Um, I'm going to look up a CWE for uh, unneeded, unneeded files maybe, but Exposure of sensitive information. Exposure of sensitive information to unauthorized. No, because we aren't like unauthorized. You know what I'm saying? Like he's authorized everything like that. So right now, uh, still nothing wrong. Because I guess you could go with improper access control, but that guy might have be allowed to do that. You know, Chad, what would you say? Since you do this as a job. You do this for a living. Well, expensive sensitive information that's unauthorized access, actor, improper management, improper access control. Um, so because we were able to dump that LSAS, but we obviously had to log in to do it right, and we had to log in with a certain user to be able to get to this part like right here. That's not really they may have that in their share for a reason. And that user has access to that share. It's not an unauthorized act or anything like that. But, like, that's not really a vulnerability because it's a text file. It's a dump. Memory, yeah, but the memory protections, the memory's in, like, right here, in the share itself. 
Like, it's almost like unneeded files in a share. Access control? So you say an access control got like improper permission privileges and access control maybe? I was thinking like how do you say like unneeded files? Let's in physical access access controls for register interface. Just improper access controls. Yeah, the dump is in the share, but the share you needed credentials to get into that portion of the share. I guess we did authenticate to it. We could say improper access control just for having that in the share. Because there's no reason to have probably that in the share. Yeah, if that's necessary. So we'll say this again. Right. And then from here, we'll go ahead and we'll throw this into there. What'd you ask there, uh, yours, or Abamel? Can you check in that file those suspect logins? Those are suspect logins. Those are, those are logins, like right there. Those are, that's an actual user on the machine. All right, let's go ahead and check out this user link right here, okay? We should be able to now pass the hash, which again, that's just Windows, right? Um, so let's go ahead and do an evil win our, or let's go ahead and craft map exec. SMB, or actually WinRM. Let's try service backup. Tech H, the hash is that. Uh, may actually want to put an IP address of 10 to 10 192, right? Unusual names? Which names? Because if I look at this, you talking about the names that I found earlier, those other people? All right, so we do get a shell on this. Because right now, let's see here. Username DC01, that's the domain controller itself. Domain controller itself, domain controller itself. Actually, we could just do a local service, service backup. We care about that person like right there. Administrator, okay. Might be actually be able to use the administrator's hash like right there. No, how do I do the line? Uh, what line it's on. Um, tech N, thank you. So, administrator is on line 112. So, if we sublime that and go to line 112, administrator, there's the administrator's hashtag right there. Might be able to use that. Let's go ahead and try it. You can just go ahead and do a crap map exec again. Well, I don't know why I just picked LDAP. Well, even if it did work, it would have worked like right there. So, hey, this will follow there, Dirk. All right, so that's not the actual administrator's hash. Okay, but now we're here. Um, you notice the administrator's hash is... No, it's not the same. Okay, so now... Uh, yeah, it is 400. Yep, yeah, the administrator's hash is the same as service backup, if you didn't notice that or not. <laughs> All right, now we actually have a shell. So now we can show here that, hey, we can now win our RAM into this machine, right? We can finally win our RAM, right? 
which this user just may be allotted with RM. That's not a problem. The tester uh, tested the credentials, the hash that was found within SMB access from user audit 2020 and was able to and and is and the user service backup is part of the um, remote logon users group there we go now we can actually log in with a pass the hash right which there's nothing really they could do about that welcome to uh windows right let's go and also grab that like right there and we want to actually throw that over here right okay now that we we are in who am i slash all or just do a who am i and then an ip config just to show that yes you are that user and that looks ugly like right there so let's not do that one we'll do a who am i again ip config all right, this is real life, it would be professional report. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that and show that we are indeed service backup on 10.10.10.192, 10, 10, right? Now they can't say, no, that's not true. Okay. All right, now we have that. Let's go ahead and see well, who am I slash all. And this is service backups. It's most likely a backup account, and it is uh, SE backup privilege. So if we have that, right, I mean, that kind of makes sense for this user because it is service backup. So, again, we're not really hitting a, you know, we're not really hitting anything amazing because it is a backup user. So I wouldn't say that, that is an um, issue. There we go. All right. Um, let's go ahead and grab my script. Tester knows that SE backup privilege can be used for privilege escalation. Right. And so we'll do a quick, do a quick SE backup privilege um, exploit and I want to put down like hack tricks some of that something that yeah something that uh, is a little more reputable so we, we can go ahead and show this like right here right Let's go ahead and show them what we're going to do. Because we're just going to use my notes about how I know how to do it. So we're going to go to Windows Exploits. Um, just kidding. This is in groups. We'll go ahead and head over to groups. Uh, this shadow backup operators group. There we go. Okay. So let's go ahead and first make this script like right here. We can exit out here now and let's go ahead and do this and the script.txt there we go okay oh not too bad trebs how you doing then we'll go ahead and we will start with SMB server grab my IP address and we're gonna do a copy from there share slash script.txt to right here
Okay. We now have script.txt in there, right? So let's go ahead and let's show that we did that whole thing. Transfer that to the Windows machine allows, or then, then transfer, then transfer that script.txt to the Windows machine. Okay, so we made that script.txt right. Let's go ahead and actually, um, I want kind of the uh, height. No, we'll leave it. We'll just crop it where we actually get it onto Windows, just so that white is down there. And then we'll go ahead and we'll actually show what we did here. All right, we'll copy that. There you go. Okay, so they could just copy and paste it right. And from here, we can go ahead and do a disk shadow slash s script dot text. Oh, it's not going too bad, Trev. It's not going too bad. What's we using? Um, I'm using uh, Flame Shot. Uh, in the above, in the above. Uh, the above screenshot the tester shows that they are creating in the above the tester is creating a disk shadow utilizing the script dot text script <laughs> that's not confusing Alex, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? All right, so that ended, so that copied all that. Let's go ahead and also show the bottom of it. We're just going to show the very bottom of this also. Okay. And from here, we will now continue following the notes, right? We'll see the end of there. Do a quick DIR. Just to show that we can see it, uh, see it there now. Notice above that E drive is now active. Okay, that shows what's in there, right? We got the ntds.dit right and everything like that, okay? And now, continue to follow what we have over here. Let's go ahead and robocopy that, and then we'll save the system and also the SAM, right? We also have to save system and SAM, which we could have just done that also. But let's go ahead and do this like right here. Oh, I try saving a C temp. We're probably gonna do this again because I just copy and pasted it right. Oh, you know what? That's gonna break it like right there. Ah, they got us. Let's go and CD back in that C drive. Or in that E drive. Uh, e drive, Windows, NTDS. And 
Now what we're going to do is go to make directory C temp. All right, then we'll go ahead and we'll run that like right there, right? Nope, we're actually not going to run that like right there. We're going to CD back into C temp now. And then we're going to run that command. There we go, okay? So why did we do that? Because we were trying to save it in the E drive again. That's why. We can't do that, okay? So we'll show this screenshot like right here. Since they don't need to go through our problems that we just had, right? Okay, boom. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna CD into that and then do a RoboCopy, right? And we don't need to copy and paste the, you know, make directory command. Like I said, it's supposed to be a competent personnel, right? Move into the tester. Then moves into the C temp directory. All right, there we go. Coming down, and then we read saved it, right? And we saved that system. Now all we have to do is just bring that back to ourselves and be done with it. Because then we should have the administrator's hash and be all finished, right? So we'll do that. We'll go and we'll copy this. And then from here, we will finally go ahead and do a DIR. And we have that. So we have the NTDS and also the system, right? Let's go ahead and grab that. Notice above, the tester now has both NTDS, dot .dit, and system. Um, I'm not taking notes. Kabuka, I am. We are taking the notes to be able to write a, a, um, oh, you are, okay. I'll say we're taking notes to be able to write a, um, report after this, at this stream. All right, so there we go. All right, now we can go ahead and we can start up our SMB server, right? And we can go ahead and copy both of these back. So we can copy, um, ntds.dit to, my IP address right to there slash share and then we can do the same thing with the other one or since we are an evil WinRM we could also do a download right make sure it's actually coming through and see that there okay we'll say start up another SMB server Right now, machine. All right, and we'll also do system. And we are almost finished here. Oh, that is 100% too. We have to say share. And then we're going to do system. There we go. So we can go ahead and now say, hey, this is how we copied it, right? Boom. Let the thing freeze for a second. There we go. And then we also copied it with this other one, like right here. Boom. There we go. No, right now it's still on the VM. Right now it's on Cherry Tree, still on the VM. All 
Oh, you think it's boring? Oh, you trying to get into more red team stuff? All right, now we have all that. Let's go ahead and do a um, secrets dump. Right, secrets dump that pie. And we're going to do that for the NTDS. I feel like my notes like right here, okay? We want to do that for local. Boom, system, system, NTDS, boom, just like that, okay? Make my life easier here. And there we go. So we now have all everything in here, right? So there we go, okay. And we have that administrator hash now. And we also have the KRB TGT hash in here, right? The tester utilizes secret stump and is able to retrieve the administrator and KRB TGT hash. Okay. Now also something else we want to do if this was a real test, go ahead and take all these. All right. Oh, too much. Let's go ahead and try to crack these hashes, right? There we go. All the way down, like right there. And we can go ahead and echo that into hash.txt. It's probably going to freeze for like a minute. That's okay. And we'll also start up a new thing over here. And we will evil win our M into administrator, right? So we're going to say 10, 10, 10, 192. Attack you, administrator, attack H, and we'll go ahead and we'll pass that hash. Do you want to stop this over here? Let's go sublime hash.txt. There you go. Save that. Let's go ahead and use, we can use John or Hashcat or, you know, whatever. There you go. Okay, so the other one that actually could crack was this one, like right here, that was with support. All right, so the hash for administrator, right? That's what we obviously need now. Which, since we saved it. All right, let's go ahead and grab that hash. We'll throw it in over here. Uh, for some reason, it doesn't seem to want to be thrown in. Oh, what the hell? Okay, cool. 10, 10, 10, dot one i 2 Administrator. Tech H. That, like, right there. All right, cool. Now we're here. We can go ahead and do a who am I. And then I peak fig. And that's again ugly, so give me a second. Who am I? IP config. And now we know that we are an administrator on this machine. Right? And that should be it. That's going to be the whole thing right there. So we now have every single thing, right, that we would probably, that we possibly need. Let's go ahead and save this. We're just going to save it as a, we'll save it on desktop, whatever. We're just going to save it as a Blackfield, Blackfield Notes. We'll save that. Now, uh, I'm going to take a quick break, and then we're going to start the process of starting to break down this OSCP exam report to actually be able to start to mess with that and make it our own. All right, so I will be right back. Um in a little bit here, about five, five, ten minutes. All right. 
And we are now on the Office of Security. This is literally you could just get this off the internet. Um, it's publicly available, so you're not getting a secret thing here or something like that, right? Uh, I think everyone pretty much knows that by now. But we are on their report template. The so very first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and take this header. All right, double click, copy that, and put that in our header. There we go. Okay, the only thing that's really annoying about this template. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a horrible report layout. It really is. It's horrible. But the only thing that's really horrible about it is that they use tables. Copy all this, paste, boom. Okay, we're done with that. Do not use their table of contents. All right, it is a, the, don't use that. Go to references, click on table contents, and click table contents. We have nothing in there yet. That is okay. Bold that, make that black. Right, there we go. Okay, that'll update as we start to do stuff. Now, we can scroll down. Take all this, this is already their template. These are already in different header formats. All right, different, um, so if you go to references and then you click on this like little guy like right here, level one, level two, and level three, all right, that's how it's gonna show up at the table of contents. We're just gonna take this and we're just gonna copy pretty much, except for we're gonna change our like exam network there, all the way down to house cleaning. Copy that. Control V, Control A, make everything black. All right. Bold. All right. Bold. Methodology's bold. Exam network. Ours was on 10, 10, 10, 192. Unbold that. All right. Their exam network thing was already bolded, so I'm just going to keep it like that. There we go. Now, if we go back up to our table of contents, and we click on it, we update table. Look at that. We have already created five pages. Uh, we're not learning how to write reports. We're learning how to use their report and utilize it like that. DZ. You missed the whole stream, DZ. <laughs> All right. Now, says whoever wrote this obviously did not put it into Grammarly. All right. We can start to make it a little bit. Like, in order to, you can just say two for you in later portions all right they forgot period finding each finding at a later date that's just later all right we can start to you know kind of do like a thing right here obviously we did do this domain right we'll delete that we're going to say uh this was blackfield dot local right now we see this john like right here right Let's go ahead and control F or actually find and replace all of the Johns. Okay. So if we go to home over here, let's go ahead and get this all the way. We can go replace and we can say John. John. Let's go ahead and just freaking first thing we want to do is click all the way up here because there's one that says John Doe and the other ones all say John. So there's John. I believe there's one that says John Doe. Let's go ahead and find that first. Okay. There's John Doe. All right, that's the very first time it's ever listed. So we can say Ryan Yeager. All right, from here, we're just going to say hereby, hereby known as tester. All right, there we go. Now we can take all the Johns and just replace all of them with tester. There you go. We just replaced every single one with tester. All right, now that we're now that we did that, let's go ahead and do this again, because I've heard of a bunch of people having problems with this. Um, we'll say that this was an independent challenge. Okay, whatever. You see, this fucking thing is in a damn table. That is annoying as shit to try to mess with. So take it out of the table. All right, we're gonna take this whole thing, copy it, paste it over here. Now it's not a table anymore. Take that independent challenges, control B. We'll control B 4.1. This was 10, 10, 10, 192. Right. IP addresses. Oh, we kept that. 
192. Okay. Obviously, if you're going to be doing the um, on the domain portion, it's going to be a little bit bigger. And we're just going to put in everything that was in the TCP, which again, if you remember, we saved it all. So if we come over here, we go to our port scan. Remember I said we're going to want all this? So, let's go ahead and bring that over there. Say 53, 88, 135, 389, 445, 593, 3268, and 5985. There we go. Okay, now we're done with that portion, right? What did we find in it? Very first thing that we had, right, if we go back to here, is anonymous access on SFB. Right, so instead of having, oh, let me try to figure this out. If I can figure out where the hell I am, like real quick, there we go. Instead of having FTP enumeration, we have SMB. Right, there we go. Okay. Upon manual enumeration, we can actually just say this. Well, that still says John, but upon manual, upon manual enumeration, SFB was shown to have anonymous access to the, uh, where is it? Profiles, to the profiles folder. Okay, <clears throat> from here, all we have to do is we just have to say initial access, right? So we can then do something like we could say references, this, we already have a level one like right here. This is level two. This is most likely level three. So if we go up here, we can actually see what level they're all at. And we can go ahead and update table, update the entire table. Yep, it's level three. So we can say super enumeration that we could just put another level three down here, right? Or we could just leave it like this and just control B, initial access. There we go. All right. Now we have that initial access. We could make it a layer three or not, whichever one. And we say vulnerability explanation. And we can take what it already says on the damn site. We already have the uh, right here, right? So we can just click here because we already saved all this. Boom. Then we can put in the actual print screen of that, right? Saying, hey, here's the actual C CWE. We can say CWE. Um, it's 284 in proper access control. Don't worry, we will change it all so it's all going to be the same thing. Okay. And then we can put in the site. And then we can put in that print screen right here. If it decides to do it, sometimes it starts to jack up between the two like that. Okay, so it jacked up, right? So now how do we fix that, right? What do we do about that, okay? We could save the image, first off. We could also put this into a PDF so we can export this file, okay? Into an XML, HTML, excuse me, or PDF. So let's export to a PDF. And we're just gonna say the whole tree, okay? Yeah, sure, we'll put it on the, NK, on the desktop. Save it there. Let's go ahead and go to terminal. Firefox. Peer -peer slash, peer -peer slash. Um, this was called Blackfield. Dot PDF. Oh, can we not save the image as? I thought we could save image as on this thing. 
fuck it. You know what else I, I do? You know what I think I actually did? Well, I was actually, uh, because I was getting annoyed with it. I think I just made another print screen of it. Like that. Because I was getting annoyed of it. So. I think I did something like that where I just made a second print screen of it. Because I think I was getting annoyed by it. Because it uh, never wants to save. I guess we could always save it as a PNG. Let's try this like right here. I forgot how I actually did this part. Like right here. So let's go ahead and do a... Uh, CWE was same as that. Let's go ahead and open that up with Firefox. Or we could always just put that back to ourself, right? What I even save it as? I don't know what that even saved as. Just .png, right? For the desktop. There we go. CWE. Copy image. See if that works like right there. Okay, that's saved all retardedly too. That's okay. Let's keep practicing on it. Let's keep uh, doing stuff. We could always take it and we could transfer it over to ourselves, right? So we can start with an SMB server. Now, I think I ended up saving all of them to a file. And then I just transfer that whole file back to myself. Or you could always, uh, instead of doing SMB server, right, you could always do a, um, you could always do a, um, a web directory, right, but and that was called CWE.png. I think that's the IP address for it. Oh, 24, that's why, okay. Stop. Stop. Please stop. <laughs> Now 24. Oh, it doesn't want to do that for some reason. Slash share, right? So we could always just make a... So let's just go ahead and make a web directory. Oh, probably because I started up in there and not in the desktop, huh? That makes sense. But let's go ahead and make a web directory. We could save all the pictures of the web directory. Go back into my local machine here. Do a quick 192.168.0.24 and go ahead and download it from here, right? See if that works, if I can just copy it and do it like that. And there we go. There's our access controls like right there, right? Kind of in a bad position just because of that picture up top. So let's go ahead and hit enter. There we go. There's our improper access controls, right? And then we can just continue working this down, okay? So we come back over here. So you notice I'm not messing with this at all. I've just made a whole nother one over here and just doing it like this, right? Severity, critical, oh, vulnerability fix, excuse me, is to see, that's why it's absolutely miserable when you're working with a table. I don't know why they did that. But vulnerability fix, try harder, is to... Um, do not allow anonymous SMB access or disallow, right? Hey, thanks a lot, Christo. All right, or disallow SMB access, something like that, right? Severity would be critical, okay? And then from here, steps to reproduce the, ex the attack, uh, exactly what we just did, right? Now, remember, this all says John, so at the very end, you're going to want to do freaking have, um, yeah, go for it, dude. You're going to want to have, obviously, um, you're going to want to find and replace everything to tester, but steps to reproduce attack, or you could just type it in here.
steps to reproduce, attack, right? And then you go ahead and you just show all the steps that you took to reproduce it. Now, the good news is over in here in our cherry tree, we already have the whole thing, right? Literally everything in here, profiles, what we saw in there, username file, what we saw in there, to the curve root, to this guy over here, right? And then just continue down. Well, no, I'm doing, <laughs> it probably does DZ, but like, you know, most, every organization in the world has Word. So if you, if you don't have your own machine or you don't have something and you can do it on Word and copy and paste it over and everything like that, I mean, a lot of things you can export to Word, but being able to do it like that, because I, I do not want to learn something totally new in the middle of trying to write this up. And all these people, they do like crap like, yeah, I took a markdown file, um, I summoned three demons and a god, they fought, and then after that was finished, it all of a sudden uh, was a Word document. You're like, oh, uh, okay, I'm just going to copy and paste over there. <laughs> but obviously, for this like right here, we'd have to save all these files, right? So we save that image as, as a PNG or whatever, right? And we save them all on the desktop, okay? And we would just save as what we want to and continue on from there. But stop trying to actually use their actual thing over here. Because obviously, this is this is horrible. This is all horrible. I mean, Google Docs, yeah, that's another one. You haven't used Word in 10 plus years? See how bad, see how bad this is? Like, see what just happened like right there? That's why everything's in a fucking table in this damn thing. All right, so don't use it, copy and paste it. All right, copy and paste it over. Copy and paste everything, do it like that. Take your whole guy over here, your cherry tree document or whatever you utilize, copy it over to your other machine and just do it like that. I mean, yeah, if you have your own template, then yes, go for it. I'm just... I mean, if you have your own template, then go for it. But uh, I, don't know, I wasn't going to make a template beforehand. <laughs> so that is literally how to do it. Just stop trying to mess with the actual report thing that it gives you and mess with your own report. Like, just copy and paste it. They're already used to seeing this. This is what they made. This is what they're used to seeing. I think my report was like 22 pages or something like that. That was it. I just took this, copy and pasted it over. And I've heard of a lot of people having problems with this uh, report, with the office security report. And I can see why, because it is truly a pain to utilize. Um, yeah, just copy and paste. That's all you have to do is just make your own version of it, copy and paste it over. All right, steps to reproduce, we would just do all that. Again, same exact thing we did to get this file over, and we would just continue to do that all the way down. We already have every single thing that we need. So hopefully, you learned something from all that. That part was only 18 minutes long.